Piriformis syndrome tends to present in many different ways. Some people feel numbness and tingling, while others experience pain, and others experience weakness. So there's a lot of different ways that it can present. However, when it comes to treating piriformis syndrome, a lot of us have our go-tos. They usually consist of nerve flossing and stretching the piriformis. But the thing is, when we stretch the piriformis, we emphasize the femur. And in this video, I want to talk about how we can address more of the root cause of the problem and actually shift our focus from the femur to the sacrum. So the piriformis runs from the anterior aspect of the sacrum around the backside to the greater trochanter of the femur. When we do our typical piriformis stretching and nerve flossing, we really focus solely on the femur. But if you take a step back and ask yourself, what is the root cause of the problem? What is the source? What we'll start to find is that it really comes back to one thing. Usually patients are overly compressed at this posterior outlet. So if we remain compressed like this and we just stretch here, it tends to give us short-term results. The patient feels good because they've increased flexibility and blood flow to the leg and the femur in this front part of the piriformis, but we still didn't address the underlying root cause. So what we can do to address the source of the problem is start to expand and open up this posterior pelvis. We can do this by starting to focus on the sacral aspect of the piriformis and getting it to move. And you'll notice that as we start to move the pelvis, not the femur, we start to open and expand this posterior outlet. The cool thing is, this sciatic nerve that a lot of people impinge, this compressed piriformis starts to learn how to be more open. This is how we start to get long-term results. So give these three exercises a shot the next time you are treating piriformis syndrome. The first exercise is a bent over hip opener. Now remember, as we go through these, the goal is to expand the side that is overly compressed. So let's say, for example, that my left piriformis is compressed. What we're going to do in this bent over hip opener is go to a bent over position, as you would think. And in this position, we are going to bring the right leg back and bent to 90 degrees at the knee. From here, you can focus on two points, either the pockets or the knees. And what you want to imagine is that you are a piston or the knees are a piston. So they can only move straight up and down. They cannot move side to side. This is how we get pure pelvic rotation to really ensure that we are opening up that posterior outlet. So all you're gonna do is bend the leg back, think of the knee or the pocket, the right side is going to push down, the left pocket is drawing up. The further I go down on this right side, the bigger stretch we get here. So remember, as I'm doing that, this left side is opening up. So as we do it, we're going down, hold for about five seconds, and then when we come up, just go to where they can tolerate. This is the lesser of the two that we wanna focus on, because the higher we go up here, the more we actually compress this left side, which is probably going to increase their symptoms. So really drive down and really give that a hold, make sure they're breathing through it. One big thing that we really wanna make sure patients do is that they are back enough. A lot of people tend to be really far forward and they actually don't feel that glute. So they need to get anchored through the heel of their foot. Once they're there, really driving down, the chest isn't moving. We're just isolating that pelvis to open up that left posterior outlet. The next exercise is a piriformis stretch. However, we're not doing the typical stretch where you hold it for 30 seconds. We are instead continuing to focus on the rotational aspect. Remember, rotation opens up this posterior outlet. So we're going to start on a box and then I'll show you how to increase the intensity on a foam roller. The biggest thing here is that the higher up you go, the less intense it's going to be for your patient. So you will throw the affected leg up 
If the patient can get their knee down, great. If they can't, that's fine. Go wherever they can tolerate. The key is to not slam or force this knee down. From here, all we're doing is focusing on drawing the right pocket forward like a piston and this left pocket straight back like a piston. So we're locking and holding on, anchoring our upper body so the ribs aren't moving a ton. And all we're doing is pushing this right pocket forward, hold for about five seconds, and then come out of it. And every time you go forward, you should feel an increased stretch on the left or the leg that's up. Again, that's opening of the posterior pelvis. So all that's happening is we are opening when we move the right pocket forward, and then we are closing. Let's check it out on the foam roller. So like I mentioned, the foam roller is a great way to increase the intensity, but it's also nice because it's cylindrical. And that shape allows us to roll forward, which starts to increase the expansion that we get. So it has a really nice effect due to its shape. The thought process is exactly the same. We're gonna throw the leg up. If the patient cannot get the knee down, don't force it. And from here, all we're doing is drawing the right side forward, left side back, hold for about five seconds, and then we can come out of it. Now, this leg, if it's abducted, it's going to make the stretch less. If it's adducted, it's going to increase the stretch. Also, pushing this foam roller forward increases the stretch, and drawing it back decreases. So you have a little bit more control and a little bit more variables to work with with the foam roller. But the concept and the goal is the same. We're trying to open up that posterior outlet and then use rotation to expand and then slightly compress it. Lastly, if you want to hit on the performance side, we can go to a split stance deadlift. When you do it, use a ball between the knees. This is going to help them really understand this piston motion that we're looking for. So now we're thinking of drawing the ball back on the left and forward on the right. Again, same goal, posterior outlet expansion. But if we don't have this ball, it's fair game for the knees to start to move out, to totally move in. And so make your life easier by using a ball. Next, we can go with a toes elevated position. All this is going to do is start to help us shift and promote internal rotation, which is the motion we're moving through on this left side. So from here, you can grab a weight. You can do it just with their hand if they want. You're going to put the left foot forward, the side we're trying to stretch, and the right foot slightly back. The trajectory is pushing the hips straight back as you reach the kettlebell for the big left toe. Now, your patient needs to know how to hinge before they do all this. So make sure they are comfortable with that. But what you want to really make sure doesn't happen is that they squat. Your patient needs to understand how to draw back and reach the right knee forward without really moving the left knee. So the left knee isn't necessarily straightening back. It's remaining slightly bent. So with that slightly bent, I'm going to use this left hand to emphasize the reach. I'm going to reach forward as I hinge back. I'm at that big toe. I feel a big left hip opener. And then we come back up. Inhale on the way down. Hold for two, three seconds, and then drive up. What should happen is there needs to be a correlation with the more that they go down and turn and open, the more stretch they get. If they don't feel that correlation, then they're probably squatting and not actually hinging with a turn. So the next time you're working with someone that is dealing with piriformis syndrome, go ahead and give these a shot. However, the one key thing that I want you to take away from this video is that the exercises aren't the important part. The principles are. So you can get creative as to what exercises you do, but it needs to have the goal and the intent to expand and open up that posterior pelvis on the side that's affected. So let me know if any questions, and if you have any good exercises, leave them in the comments below.